Welcome. And now that we've discussed monohybrid crosses, a cross between one genotype, uh, one parent gene with another parent's gene, one gene, we're going to look at dihybrid crosses. Dihybrid crosses take two different genes and cross them for the parents. And what is the probability of the offspring having different combinations of each of those two different genes? Okay. So here, the first thing, again, the steps in a dihybrid cross are going to be very similar. You need to determine the parent genotypes. The next thing you need to do is determine and set up your Punnett square. With a dihybrid cross, that's a little bit more complicated. And I'm going to take a look at showing you how to do something called FOIL, which many of you have done in your math classes. And we're going to reintroduce it in here in dihybrid crosses. I'm going to show you how to set, actually set up your large Punnett square and fill that in. And then finally, you have to be able to do the genotype and phenotype ratios. So please review monohybrid crosses again if you need to before jumping into the dihybrid crosses. For the first thing you need to do is read the problem. And in reading the problem, figure out exactly what it is it's saying and then go from there. So here, the problem reads, in guinea pigs, black hair is dominant to white hair color. Also, short hair is dominant to long hair. A male guinea pig is, a heter is heterozygous for both black hair and short length, is crossed with a female that has white hair and is heterozygous for short length. What would the genotype and phenotype ratios of their offspring be? So the first thing you have to do is figure out the genotypes of the parents before we can even look at crossing them. So parent number one, it says right here, is heterozygous for both black hair and short length. Okay, heterozygous for both. So now we're looking at having four different letters because you have to have two for color and two for length. So let's first of all figure out what we're going to use. We said black is dominant to white, so let's use a big B for black and a little b for white. Short is dominant over long. Now, it's hard to use S's because it's really hard to tell the difference between a big S and a little S when you just have the two together and you don't have anything to compare it to. So, for here, let's use an L for length of the hair. So we'll use a big L for short and a little L for long. Okay. So parent number one, we just said, is heterozygous for both black hair and short hair. So if it's heterozygous for black, it's going to have a big B and a little b. It's going to have a black allele and a white allele. And it's heterozygous for length. So it's going to have a big L for short hair and a little L for long hair. So parent number one is going to be big B, little b, big L, little L. Next, let's take a look at parent number two. <coughs> Excuse me. Parent number two is a female that has white hair and is heterozygous for short hair. So if she has white hair, white is recessive, so it has to be the two recessive alleles. So she is going to have little b, little b genotype for that. And then we need two for our hair length. She is heterozygous for short hair length. Short hair is dominant and heterozygous meaning she has to have the two different ones. So her genotype would be little b, little b, big L, little l. Next, after you figure out the parent genotypes, you need to figure out how it is we're going to fill out this Punnett square. You'll notice that the Punnett square is a little bit bigger. We now have 16 boxes instead of four, and it's four across the top and four down the side. However, we need to figure out how to fit two letters into each of this, each of these top and each of the bottom, so that we end up with the four letters in here that we need to make it correct. So to do that, we do something called foiling, which you guys do in math class. Okay? To do it here, it's pretty much the same thing. You're going to take a look at parent number one. You're going to look at the B's and the L's separately. 
So the first one here is the F, and we're looking at the first of each of the letters. So the first B and the first L. The first B is a big B, or an uppercase B, and the first L is an uppercase L. So for F, it would be big B, big L. For our O's, those would be our outside two letters. So we're looking at the outside B and the outside L. So big B, little L. Okay. Then we're going to look at our inside two letters. So you're going to look at the two letters that are in the very center of the combination. So here it's a little b, big L. Little b, big L. And then you're going to take a look at the last two letters. So the last b and the last L. So the last b is a little b and the last L is a little L. Now to double check yourself and make sure you did this as you need to, you need to make sure that you have a B and an L in each combination. Okay. The second parent, you're going to do the exact same thing too. So you're going to look at parent number two's genes. You're going to take the first two, so little b, big L. Then you're going to take the outside two, little b, little L. Then you're going to take the inside two, little b, big L. And then you're going to take the last two, so the last B and the last L, little b, little L. From here, you're going to fill in each of the boxes across the top with parent number one's double combinations of genes. So you're just going to take the first one and you're going to put it here. You're going to take the inside one and you're going to place it here. You're going to take the, uh, sorry, the outside. The outside is going to go here. Then the inside will go here. And then finally the last will go in the last box. So you'll have the four that you just carry down. Parent number two you're going to do the same thing with, but you're going to go down the side. So you're going to take little b, big L for the first one. The second one, little b, little L. The third one, little b, big L. And the fourth one, little b, little L. Once you've filled in the parent genotypes, you can then start filling in the box of, the off of what the offspring um, combinations could be. Couple of rules with this. Always go in alphabetical order. And from alphabetical order, always place your uppercase letters first. So here we have B's and L's. B's will go before the L's because alphabetically they go before L. And then you're going to place your uppercase B's before your lowercase B's, and then your uppercase L's before your lowercase L's. This will make it much easier when reading this data table, when reading the table, to figure out the different combinations of genotypes that you have. Okay? Because big B, little b is the exact same thing as little b, big b. Okay? So if you write it in a certain order, it will just make it that much easier to read. So for here, we're going to fill in our B's first. We have a big B and a little b. So we're going to go big B, little b. And then we have our L's. We have a big L and a big L. So those are both go in there. Big L, big L. Then we have here big B, little b. So we're going to fill in big B, little b. And then this one's going to be big L, little l. Okay. We would fill in the entire Punnett square this way. So each box you would look, so if we're going to look at this box, you're going to fill it in by what's to the left and what's to the top. So this box is going to have little b, little b, big L, big L. Okay. All right. So you can fill this into practice. If you pause this right now, you can fill in your Punnett square to practice. And then in just a minute, I'm going to flip to the next page, and it's going to already have it completed. Okay. So go ahead and pause right now if you're going to try to fi finish this, and then double check your work. All right. Once we've filled in the Punnett square, you'll notice that all the combinations of genes, genotypes are here, so you can double check your work. You can actually pause it right now if you want to. Double check, make sure you've gotten the correct 
letters in each of the boxes. And then the next step is to take a look at genotype ratios and phenotype ratios. So in looking at the genotype ratios, you have to look in each box and figure out how many of each combination you have. So to do this, we'll start with the top box here. Big B, little b, big L, big L. So I'm going to put big B, little b, big L, big L right here. Then I'm going to go through all 16 boxes and figure out how many big B, little b, big L, big L's I have. So if you look, this is one, and I'm just going to draw a line through it so I know I've already counted it. Okay? This one's not the same, not the same, not the same. No, 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 and no. This one is the same, so I have two of them. No, 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 and no. So I have two. Big B, little B's, big L's, big L's. So then I'm going to do the next one. Big B, little B, big L, little L. So there's one. No, no. There's two. No, no, no. There's three. No, no. And there's four. One, no, and no. So I have four. Big B, little B. Little B, big L, little L. Okay? So I'm going to continue going through and doing this. This one is little b, little b, big L, big L. How many of those do I have? Just the one, and I have two there, and that's it. So I have two, little b, little b, big L, big L. Next one, I have little b, little b, big L, little L. I have one, I have two, no. Three, no, four, no. So I have four, little b, little b, big L, little L. I'll hit the next one. This one's my next open box, big b, little b, little L, little L. No, no, and yes. So I have two, big b, little b's, little L, little L. And then finally, my last two are exactly the same. Two, little b, little b, little l, little l. And apparently, I wanted three l's on that one. So I should have big b, little b, little l, little l for this one. Okay? So these are my genotype ratios. How many different combinations of the different letters do I have? Then I need to do my phenotype ratios. Okay? So I need to remember that big B is black and little b is white. Big L is short hair and little L is long hair. So I'm going to look at each of these genotypes and figure out what it's going to be. Is it going to be black with short hair, black with long hair? Is it going to be white with short hair or white with long hair? Okay. So this one right here is going, it has a big B. Big B is dominant, black is dominant, so it's going to have a big B. Black hair, big L's, which are short hair, so it's going to be black with short hair. And so right now I have two of those, so I'm going to put a two down here. Let's see what the next one is. The next one, big B, big B, big L, little L. Big B is going to tell me it's going to be black hair, big L is telling me it's going to be short hair. So these four are also going to be black with short hair. So I'm going to add four more to that. So I'm going to have a total of six with black short hair. So I've done this one. I've done this one. Let's take a look at this one. Little b, little b is white. Big L, big L is going to be short hair. So I'm going to have two with white short hair. Now, next one, little b, little b is going to be white hair, big L, little l is going to be short hair. So I've got another four that are going to be white with short hair. So I'm going to add four more to that. So I have a total of six. So I've done this one. Let's take a look at the next one. Big b, little b tells me it's going to be black. Two little l's tell me it's going to be long hair. So black with long 
hair. Okay. And I've got two of those. So let's look at the next one. Little B, little B, little L, little L. White hair, which is long. So I'm going to have two white with long hair. Now just to double check, make sure I've hit them all. I'm going to take and add these up. 6 plus 6 gives me 12, plus another 2 gives me 14, plus another 2 gives me 16. I had 16 boxes, so I have 16 different combinations that I could have gotten. Okay. Same thing up here. 2 plus 4 plus 2 plus 4 plus 2 plus 2 gives me the 16. Okay. This is how you make complete a dye hybrid cross. You have two different combinations of, of genes for two different parents. So you're going to have four different letters. Each column or row for the Punnett square is going to have two different letters from each of the parents. Each box from the offspring is going to have four different letters. And this gives you the combination of two different genes to look at.